Hi, so my name is Asa Snyder. I work for a company called Ecovative. Um, before I tell you about what we do, <laughs> okay. Uh, I want to talk a little bit about uh, the timelines of the things we use. So, plastic. Uh, the plastic in this chair started from oil that's at least 65 million years old. And it's going to last for thousands of years unless we incinerate it or something else like that. But if this goes into a landfill or you throw a plastic water bottle into the ocean, we're talking at least thousands of years that that plastic is still going to be around. And we have no control over what it does once it's in the ocean and getting broken up into smaller and smaller particles. Uh, that's not a human time scale. That's not something that we can have any real conception of what it's going to do in the future. What we need are sustainable materials and renewable materials that operate on a human time scale so that we can put them back into the carbon cycle, recycle them, renew them, without having to commit ourselves to thousands of years of whatever it is we made. Good news is we've got a lot of options for things that we can choose from. Uh, I'll use uh, wood, for example. Trees can grow on a human time scale, and wood is a wonderful material. It lasts for hundreds of years if you take care of it properly. And when you're done with it, you can compost it, put it back to nature, and make more trees. At Ecovative, we focus on mushrooms. <laughs> uh, what you see here is the actually the fruiting body of the mushrooms. Uh, when you're walking through the woods, typically what you see is uh, the reproductive stage where it's generating spores, uh, basically mushroom seeds, uh, to spread the mushrooms around. What you don't see is the mycelium. Uh, the mycelium is like the mushroom roots that uh, typically would grow underground or grow through trees. Uh, it tends to be much longer lasting than the fruiting bodies. So it's there all the time and you don't see it uh, until it pops up uh, in, the, in the typical mushroom. So what we do is we take agricultural waste, the fungal mycelium, and we let the fungal mycelium grow through the agricultural waste and bind it together to create a whole new class of products um, that are renewable, home compostable, um, and cost competitive, really. So this is a scanning electron microscope of the mycelium. You can see that it creates this dense mag network of uh, Strands. It's really a biopolymer, and it glues things together, binds things together, and holds them. So, packaging is the, the materials that we started out with. Uh, this is an example of a corner cube. So this would go in a box to protect, say, a table in shipping. Um, we have partnered with Sealed Air Corporation. They're one of the largest packaging uh, corporations in the world. Uh, we've licensed our technology to them, so they're producing this mushroom packaging and selling it. Uh, we've also worked with Steelcase and Dell Computers to um, help them meet some of their uh, sustainability goals by, by helping eliminate plastic and styrofoam packaging. So this is really a direct competitor to the typical molded EPS polystyrene packaging that you would see. Uh, it is home compostable. Uh, these cups that you see, these are compostable cups according to what they say on them. But a lot of the materials like this, the plastics, are not home compostable. You actually have to compost them in an industrial composting facility that gets higher temperatures and they do uh, certain different uh, regimens of flipping the, the compost to get air through in certain ways. This stuff, throw up your garden, a couple of months later, it's back to the earth, back to the mulch. Uh, one of the really exciting things that we're working on is uh, microboard. So that's stuff like this. This is a uh, agricultural waste and mycelium product 
nothing else in here, no glues, no binders, just the mycelium and agricultural waste. And we end up with something that's very much like a park board or a, uh, like a strong cardboard. So this is very exciting. Uh, one of, the, one of the issues with using wood-based products like this, like the oriented strand board or um, a lot of the building materials is it can make formaldehyde glues. And the industry is really trying to get away from that. Um, I've heard stories of people in the industry whose business card says, if you have a formaldehyde replacement, call me. And they hand these business cards out to everybody because they're really looking to, to replace the stuff. And so this is our solution to that. As I said, it's just mycelium and agricultural waste. So it's it, no harmful off-gassing. You can throw it in the woods and it'll go back to nature in a couple of months. Uh, this is an example of a chair back. So this would be covered in fabric and then uh, attached to a, a, a chair. So if, I'll pass this around if anybody wants to see it. How does that hold up if it's wet or damp? Um, it would be sort of like wood or materials like that. A, a lot of the mycelium is actually hydrophobic, so water will tend to beat up and roll off uh, and not soak in. Obviously, if you leave it out in the weather for a while, it'll break down just like any organic matter. But uh, it's pretty good, actually. It's pretty resistant. Uh, Another example of something we're working on is grown in place insulation. So this is a uh, mushroom tiny house that we built as a test case. So the walls of this house, you can see in the bottom corner there, a witness window. That's the mycelium insulation that is grown in place in these walls. So these walls become like a structural insulated panel with an exterior sheathing of uh, pine, an interior uh, pine paneling. And in between, this mushroom is grown in place. It's, again, just mushroom and agricultural waste, uh, you know, corn husks, things like that. And it binds everything together and then dries out and you end up with a solid insulating wall. We've taken this around to uh, various tiny house. Uh, I guess they have competitions <laughs> and um, exhibits and shows, just like the car show. People take their little houses on the trailers around and uh, show them off. Um, so as I mentioned, uh, structural insulated panels are another thing that we're looking at. Uh, an example of that would be uh, sort of like what you see with that <coughs> chair back. If you were to laminate two layers of that on each side of some of the lighter, more styrofoam-like uh, insulation that we make, you can end up with a, a panel that you can then basically bolt these things together to build a house on site, and it's self-supporting and self-insulating. We, we're not there yet but something coming down the pipe. So I'll show you a couple other uh, sample products we have. Um, this is an insulated wine sugar. This is one of the consumer products that we make. Uh, it's just two parts that fit together and it's both protective and insulative. So I'll pass this around or I don't know how we should do this. Maybe I'll leave some samples on a, on a table back there for people to see afterwards. These are something cool that, uh, as far as I know, we haven't talked about in public yet. These are attic spacers. So they fit over the joists in an attic and allow you to lay a decking on top of two by fours. And they give you a lot of space that you can fill with insulation then. And they themselves act as an insulated standoff so that you can you know, get a super insulated attic and still maintain a decking space if you want storage or you want a little workspace like that. So these are cool. And one of the neat things that these demonstrate is you can see this line, this uh, jigsaw line. We grow these things in two parts in a uh, plastic tray. And then halfway through the growth process, after it's bound together, but before uh, we're ready to dry it out, we pop the two parts out of the molds, put them together, and they actually grow together to become one part. Again, without any glues or binders, it's just the mycelium growing through the agricultural waste, binding it together. And so you end up with one solid part, and the mushrooms do all work. Lisa, how do you stop the growing process, like there or in the wall? Um, in the wall, we just uh, basically let it grow as much as it's going to grow, and uh, it'll, it'll tend to dry out and desiccate naturally. 
Uh, for products like this, we actually make it in an oven uh, to kill off the mycelium, so you don't have to worry about the, the fruiting or generating spores or anything. So this is pretty much killed. And in a, I'll take questions. Can you compare it to cork? I'm not sure if cork is uh, cork is Could you material. repeat the question? Um, she asked about comparing it to cork. Oh. Um, cork is a natural material. Uh, I'm not actually sure how they bind cork together. I know that they make a lot of products with um, like cork chips that are bound. And I would assume that they use some kind of a, a binder, uh, a glue for that. I don't know what they do. But I imagine something this size out of cork would be pretty expensive. And the wood uh, material. Yeah. Would it cause mold inside of the wall? Uh, that's one of the things that we are testing with the, di the tiny house prototype, is just to see how it reacts. Uh, one of the nice things about the mycelium is when once the mycelium is fully colonized, all the material, uh, it is the dominant species, so it's not really going to let mold uh, compete with it. Uh, that is something that we have to worry about in the process, is competition of molds. But once the mycelium takes over, it's pretty resilient. And it actually, I think, has certain micro and microbial properties. Does it absorb water? Um, would that absorb water? It, if you, if you were to leave it out for a while, it would, but it's pretty hydrophobic. It's not going to you know, just absorb water out of the air, typically. And if you uh, were to pour water on it, it would pretty much beat up and roll off. You really have to soak it for a while. Uh, Oh, one of the other nice things about it is that it's actually pretty fireproof. If you were to try to light this thing on fire, it might smolder a little bit, but it'll put itself right out. Any other questions? Thank you.